in the seven trumpets in Revelation, we find the number one-third, the third part symbolically used. But what is the meaning of that fraction, one-third? This is part 47 of the Revelation study. Okay, we've been working through Revelation, and we, we've learned that we need to compare spirit with spirit, spiritual with spiritual, scripture with scripture, Jesus' words are spirit in the life. And, and we do that by, we compare scripture by scripture by looking a little bit here, looking he there, throughout the Bible, line upon line, here a little bit, there a little bit, precept upon precept. We look at all the scriptures on a topic to come to truth. And we find in Rev Revelation 8 through 11, the seven trumpets heavily feature this idea about the one-third part. So we need to look through the Bible and understand what that symbolically means in order to really understand the seven trumpets of Revelation. So when we look at those seven trumpets of Revelation 8 through 11, we see that the first trumpet, uh, second trumpet, third trumpet, fourth trumpet, and sixth trumpet all prominently feature one-third. So we have to understand what one-third means. We can't overlook that. We can't just say it's a literal number because that doesn't make sense. We have to look at the spiritual meaning, the symbolic meaning, and look through the Bible to understand this one-third. And, and one-third is not used very often in the Bible, so we're going to look at that. So again, first trumpet, a third of the trees are burned up. Second trumpet, a third of the sea. A third of the sea creatures. A third of the ships were destroyed. The third trumpet was a third of the rivers and fountains of water became bitter. Fourth trumpet, it's a third of the sun. A third of the moon. A third of the stars. And then, and then the sixth trumpet, the great army that kills a third of mankind. And then we see notably that the fifth trumpet and the seventh trumpet do not involve that number. So we want to understand why that is. And we're going to be looking at the trumpets over the next several videos. But in this video, we want to understand this idea about the third part, the fraction one-third. Uh, please consider subscribing. There's a little red button in the bottom right-hand corner. And let's move on to understand this fraction. Okay, so it's a key passage. Um, there's key passages in the Bible. One-third does not actually show up very often in the Bible. Now, we've, we've compiled the uh, various occurrences of one-third on our website, The Rock of Offense, and I've listed the actual address to get to the, our study on the spiritual meaning of numbers. Um, and, and, but we, we're going to look in this video about the, the two most prominent features and, and especially the Zechariah passage really clarifies what third, one-third is pointing to. And there, there's other examples, and we would have to look through the Bible and compare Scripture to Scripture to go through all these passages to really get the full spiritual meaning of them. But we're going to look at these two passages. These are the key passages to un understand this fraction uh, one-third. So let's move on and look at those. Okay, first Zechariah 13. This is the most important, and the, we, we, when we compare Scripture with Scripture, we look for the clearest passages that help explain the ones less clear, or the, the ones that the symbolism is more involved, but we look at the clearest passages where God defines things, and we always find that in the Bible when we look at symbols, that there's always a, a, a couple passages that are much more clear than others. And we find that in Zechariah 13. So we see that this is a, a beautiful passage, and it, it, it's prophetic. This is a prophetic passage. A Waco sword against my shepherd, of course, it's Jesus Christ, and against the man that is my fellow, says the Lord of hosts. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. And that's quoted in the New Testament. And I will turn my hand upon the little ones. And these little ones are going to point to all true Christians. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, says the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. And I will bring that third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call upon my name, and I will hear them, and I will say, It is my people! And they shall say, The Lord is my God! And it becomes very clear, this passage is so clear what the one-third refers to. And, and often in Scripture, uh, symbols can refer to different type of things, but, but this passage is very clear that it's talking about Christians. 
the, and and the interesting part that the, this third part, the Christians, they're, they're refined in this fire. They will be refined as silver is refined. They will be tried as gold is tried. And there's passages in the New Testament that that attest to that, which we're going to be looking at in future videos. So we see a very clear passage of the one third referring to Christians. It's the trial. It's the refining of God's people. So when we look, we're, we're going to go back to Revelation and look at that. We have to keep that in mind so we can clearly understand what these trumpets are really telling us. Okay, the other uh, passage we're going to look at is Elijah and the one third. One third relates to something that happened with Eli Elijah. Uh, at the time, the king of Israel, Ahaziah, he fell and, and he fell through a lattice and he sent messengers to inquire of Beelzebub, the lord of the flies, none other than Satan's kingdom. But Elijah withstood them. He saw the evilness of doing that. And we see this passage in 2 Kings 1 and Elijah was standing in the way. So this king, Ahaziah, ultimately sent three groups of 50 men, each having a captain. So there was three companies. And the first two companies, as they went, Elijah called down fire from heaven, and they were destroyed. Fire from heaven, and fire from heaven, and Elijah was is discussed in the New Testament. But but he the first, but the third company is different. The third company was saved, and they represent something different. They represent people that 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 submit to God and listen to the word of God. So let's read the passage about this third company. And it's in 2 Kings 1, verse 13 and 14. He sent again a captain of the third 50 with his 50. And the third captain of 50 went up and came. And instead of moving on to, to beseech Beelzebub, they fell on their knees before Elisha. They're a symbol. They're a type. They're a portrait of what Christians are. Beseeching God instead and besought him and said unto him, O man of God, I pray thee, let my life and the life of these 50 thy servants be precious in thy sight. He knew the significance of Elijah, that this is God's prophet. Behold, there came fire down from heaven and burn up the other two captains of the former 50s with their 50s, but let my life now be precious in thy sight. This one third, this final third part, is a beautiful picture of the, 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 the God's people that, that know the difficulties of life and have, are, are seeing the fire burning up others coming to beseech and humbling themselves before God's word. So we see another powerful proof of the one-third in Scripture pointing to being a portrait of God's people. But it's worthwhile to look at another occurrence of one-third, because the one-third does not occur that often in the Bible, but we see just a few chapters later in Revelation 12 that Satan casts down, he drew, draws a third part of the stars of heaven to the earth. And those stars, stars often represent angels, as we've seen in Revelation 1.16. And the, so we see the passage of the great red dragon, which is Satan, having seven heads, ten horns, seven crowns upon his heads, which has other spiritual meaning, which we'll get to in a future video. His tail drew down the third part of the stars of heaven did cast him to the earth, and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for, to devour her child as soon as it was born. This is the throwing down of the angels, the demons, the wicked ones. There was many occasions in the New Testament, in the Gospels, featuring demons in, inhabiting people. There was, the Satan's demons were thrown to earth, and, and Satan was there to devour Christ. He came to earth, and, but we have to answer, why one-third? And normally one third refers to the refining of God's people, but but we see that this harmonizes because the one third of the the demons it's Satan's kingdom that that they they couldn't devour Christ. But we read in verse seventeen that the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ. The remnant of her seed that's God's people. The third Satan and his horde of demons is after the church. It's, it's, it's the same number. It, it's ultimately, it's the refining of God's people, but it's Satan's part or how he's 
he's been allowed to throw his demons down and it's going to affect Christians and they're going to persecute, but, but the Christians are going to be saved out of that by God. So again, we see harmony with the third of Satan, the angels, the, the Satan's demons, but they, they persecute Christians. They, they're used in the refinement of Christians. Okay, so let's look at those two trumpets that didn't have a reference to the one third. It was the, the and we're going to look at these in future videos, but just a quick comment on this. Uh, the, the, the context of the fifth trumpet is the great tribulation, but it's the impact on the unsaved mankind. It's the locust army, this great army of locusts that comes upon unsaved mankind. And we see that, and we know this, that the fifth trumpet effect, does not affect God's people. So let's read the passage in Revelation 9. There came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth of power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Christians, God's people, have the seal of God in their foreheads. They're sealed with the Holy Spirit. They're, they're marked with the name of God in their foreheads. So we see that that's why the one-third does not appear in the fifth trumpet, because the fifth trumpet is addressing those men which have not the seal of God. It's those people that are not God's people. So that's the other trumpets, the first four, all affect God's people. The fifth trumpet does not. So let's go on and look at the seventh trumpet. And we see that the seventh trumpet does not refer to the one-third, because it's, a, it's judgment day on unsaved mankind. God's people don't receive God's judgment. They, they are found to be innocent. They are under the blood of Christ. So let's read the passage in Revelation 11. The seventh angel sounded, and there was great voice in heaven, saying, The kings of this world are become the kingdoms of our, of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come. Christians do not receive the wrath of God. At Judgment Day, they receive reward. They, were, they aren't judged. They, they have, it's a day of being with Christ. And the time of the dead that they should be judged, and that they should give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and should destroy them which destroy the earth. So their Judgment Day, the last day, it, it, it's a judgment against, against unsaved people. So we see a, there's no mention of a one-third in the seventh trumpet. But as a final check on this, Let's go back and look at the sixth trumpet to see that the third refers to uh, Christians in that passage. And very importantly, let's look at the sixth trumpet, because the sixth trumpet clearly proves that the one-third that are killed during th this attack of this army in the sixth trumpet refer to Christians, and the other people, everybody else, refer to people that are clearly not saved, not God's people. So it's a very, very clear proof that the third refers to God's people under trial. And we're going to, so let's read this passage. Uh, it's Revelation 9. And here's some excerpts uh, for, uh, of this passage. There four angels were loose, were, which were prepared for an hour, a day, a month, and a year to, for to slay the third part of men. So there's a time that the third part of men will be slain and that's a symbolic meaning it's a spiritual meaning it's not talking about physical death and we'll look at that in the future video on this the number of the army of the horsemen were two hundred thousand thousand two myriads of myriads uh, which comes to 200 million but we're going to look at the spiritual meaning of that number when we get to this and i heard the number of them by by these three was the third part of men killed by the fire the smoke and the brimstone which come out of their mouths and the mouths have a symbolic meaning and it's going to point to false teaching and persecution etc but here's the key point the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues so the other two-thirds they repented not of the works of their hands that they should not worship devils idols of gold and silver brass stone and of wood which neither can see nor hear nor walk, neither repented they of their murders, nor their sorceries, nor the fornication, nor their thefts. Clearly pointing to people that are not God's people, not Christians, because Christians don't practice those behaviors. So we see a very clear example or proof that the sixth trumpet, the third, refers to God's people. So, uh, so we're going to look at these details of all the trumpets in upcoming videos. So, but for now, we have to see that the one-third is the refining of God's people. Okay, 
So, and, and again, the one third, the number of trial of God's people, the refining of God's people, the church age, the first four trumpets clearly feature the one third. It's all about the church age, and it's all about the trials of Christians and the the the, the proving of Christians and the refining of Christians. And we're going to look at that. The fifth and sixth trumpet will point to the great tribulation, and we're going to look at that in these future videos. The fifth trumpet. It's the unsaved people. There's no mention of one third, but it's it's the great tribulation, how it affects the unsaved. And it's gonna be all about sin and lawlessness. The sixth trumpet is how what the impact on God's people is during the great tribulation. And then finally the last day is judgment day. Judgment is on uh, people that are not saved. It's not God's people. So this is an important introduction. Um, please consider these passages. We're going to move on from here. The next video, part 48, we're going to look at the first trumpet. And again, it features the number one third, and we're going to sort that out. And uh, please consider subscribing. There's a little red button in the right-hand corner. And thank you very much for watching this video.